Welcome to the Offshore Club's fun-filled, fact-filled, fast-paced blockbuster podcast, Coffee with Karen Carter, coming to you exclusively from where the sun never sets on the good life at a great price. And now, fill up your favorite coffee mug and join your expert and your guide, Karen Carter Clues. Hello, 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 and welcome to Coffee. There we go, with Carib Carter. Grab your coffee, join me, let's talk, let's have some fun. Welcome, welcome. Today, we are going to do a lot of great stuff. we got a great show for you. Number 67, by the way, number 67. I want you to think about what that means, folks. That's a year and almost two months. We, we together, outlasted CNN Plus by... A year and six weeks. <laughs> okay. I think they lasted a week. We've been together a year and almost two months. So good for us. Okay. We'll drink to that. There we go. So we got a great, as I said, we got a great show today. A lot of good stuff. Before I get started, a little housekeeping, a little housekeeping. Okay. I, I need, I need for you to click subscribe. Okay. I know we have a lot of viewers that, that haven't yet clicked subscribe. I'll tell you why it's important, okay? One, you'll be notified whenever a show goes up to make sure you don't miss one, okay? I know if you get the Gazette every day, the Offshore Club Gazette, which is free. If you haven't signed up, go to offshore.club and sign up, okay? Make sure to do that. Uh, it's free. Great newsletter. Great daily newsletter. But, go to, but just so you know, anytime... Coffee with Carib Carter is posted, which is every Monday at noon at offshore.club. You'll get notified if you subscribe. And equally important, equally important is if you subscribe, YouTube will go out and tell other people who have tastes like yours, who are like you and me, who are adventurous souls. Hey, you got to tune in. Okay. And that grows the audience. And that way you and I help lots of other folks. Okay. And really with our offshore club, that's the name of the game, okay? Helping people with their plan B, get offshore and live the good life at a great price in the sun, sand, and surf. I always say this in Central or South America, okay? So please hit that subscribe button and let's spread the word, spread the good word, okay? Now, today's show, today's show, I just love it. I just love it. One thing, I have a very special old friend coming back, okay? Very special old friend. I'm going to reintroduce you because it's been like maybe six months. Um, she did a weekly podcast, but then, you know, you know, what, what did Thomas Jefferson said? Events get the saddle and ride mankind busy a million ways, but we're going to relaunch it. We're going to relaunch Leslie at large with <laughs> Leslie Lawrence. And I know you love her because I got your notifications from you about it. So that's coming up. Okay. Interview with Leslie, who is always, <laughs> I got to be honest with you, when I, ever I talk to Leslie, I never know where she's going to come from and I can't stop laughing, okay? So we're going to reintroduce Leslie at Large weekly podcast. I think it's going to be on every Wednesday. That's coming up, the interview, later today, later in the show today, okay? We also have an incredible um, $1,000 listing Caribbean. I'm going to take you to San, Sal San Salvador, El Salvador, okay? And some of you are going... I don't want to go to San Salvador. You've heard it's not safe. Do not listen to the U.S. State Department. Always keep this in mind. Always qui bono. Who benefits, okay? The U.S. State Department soaks up billions and billions and billions of your do tax dollars every year. Your, what word did I use? Tax dollars. Oh, tax dollars. So, of course, they badmouth every other country in the world, particularly our neighbors in Central or South America, because they want you to stay here and pay them, pay their salaries, you know, down in Foggy Bottom, you know, all these grifters down there. So don't listen to them. Trust me, you're going to see with a video I'm going to show you, it's safer than almost any city in America today. And when you when you see this video, you're going to say, you know, what? I'd like to be there. So that's coming up. That's coming up. We're going to do that. Then I have a special gift for you, for one of you. I have a special gift for you. I have a book that you are going to love. I read it cover to cover. I was almost transfixed by it. It was so informative and inspiring. 
and I'm going to give it away at the end of Coffee with Carib Carter today. Okay, so let's get started with our interview with Leslie Lawrence and prepare. I'm just going to tell you, prepare to laugh because she is, she is some people are just naturally funny and she is. Plus, she really is. Leslie Lawrence is going to take you everywhere you've ever wanted to go in Nicaragua, also Honduras, Belize. You're going to love that show and you're going to love this interview. Let's talk, let's talk with Leslie. Leslie, welcome to Coffee with Carib Carter. How are you? I'm doing great. It's great to be back. I've missed everyone. Well, well I know we missed you because I said earlier, I got cards and letters about it saying, what happened to Leslie at large? And I said, she'll be back. She's at large. She's at large. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's been a whirlwind. I think since I talked January, I was in Belize. Then I went to Panama in February for about 10 days. Um, during that time, I transitioned into a new role with my career. Uh, got back here. I had rescued a little Nicaraguan dog. You know, I like to talk about my dogs, Carter. And I have one rescue from Texas where I'm born and raised. I have a dog that I rescued in Belize where I did live. And then I came here and I started volunteering with this amazing organization called Nika Love. And they do clinics <laughs> around the different communities. And I held this really sick puppy. And next thing you know, they were like, can you foster this puppy and try to give him a chance? And I fostered him several months ago. Um, so I, I think he's here to stay. And I named him Lucky. So I have Lucky. Liz. Yes, I have Lizzie Lou. Are you ready for this? You're going right. to love it. Lizzie Lou, Livy Love, Lucky Lee, spelled L E E, because I'm Leslie Lee, spelled L E I G H. We like our L's around here. Lots of L's. So you are actually three L's Leslie Lee I'm Lawrence. I'm triple L. Fantastic. L's. Now, let me ask you a question. Do the, 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 does the, do the Nicaraguan and Belizean dogs bark with a different accent? <laughs> well, my dogs are so smart. I'm trying, they're going to be bilingual. So they understand Spanish and English commands. Um, but it's so funny, my Belizean, in Belize, we call them pot lickers. And so my Belizean pot licker, uh, which I might add, she's award winning. They had a first annual best in show dog show in Belize right before I moved to Nicaragua. And the catch was they had to have been born in Belize to enter this dog show. And my Livy Love won the whole competition. She has a huge trophy. It finally made its way here to Nicaragua. So I was very <laughs> proud of her. Uh, but it's funny because my Belize pot licker and then my uh, Nicaraguan little rescue they are so similar. Like they're like two peas in a pod. And I just get so tickled. Their mannerisms, of course, I think Livy's kind of raising lucky, you know, but I, th I think there's something to that. The Central American rescue dogs. I don't know. They're, they're really funny personalities. I love them. Well, I, I am a dog lover. I had a wonderful Doberman for 11 years. And the uh, funny story real quick, when I first got him, I was on a plane going somewhere. And somehow it came up that I got the Doberman puppy. And the woman sitting next to me said, do you know the difference between a, a German police dog and a Doberman pincher? And I said, well, what is it? And she said, well, a German police dog may bite you. A Doberman pincher will bite you. <laughs> <laughs> Baron bit 11 people in 11 years. He never missed one year. Just, just keep in practice, wow. I think. So I'm not, so, but, but he, he didn't. Now, he, this wasn't rip arm off bite. This was. Nip right. Okay. So, so I'm a dog lover too. So there you are. Now, is that the real scenery behind you or are you in front of a screen? No, it's a screen. Oh man. I know. I wish it was the real, I I'm actually, I'm indoors right now. Um, it is sunshine here today. Of course, we're now in our rainy season here in Nicaragua, but right. we had some storms last night, but usually it's kind of like in the tropics, like it was in Belize. You know, you get rain during the nighttime and beautiful lightning shows. It's amazing to sit there and watch. Um, but during the day, the sun usually comes out. So we have sunshine and beautiful weather today. And we'll see. We'll probably, I would suspect, probably get a little bit of rain tonight. But it does look like that where you are, right? Oh, yes. Blue skies, palm trees. Absolutely beautiful. Incredible. Incredible. So you are in Nicaragua at Grand Pacifica. That's okay? correct. Grand Pacifica to me is 
folks, it is the number one residential resort community in all of Central America. I always tell people it is a Mike Cobb community. That says it all. That means you're going to get all the amenities totally taken care of. You're going to get pampered. Am I right? Am I right about that? Yes, you're right. I love this community. You've heard me talk about it before, Carter. Yes. Um, and we're, we're still growing. It's so fun to see the changes. You, we have, I think there's uh, almost 100 homes in construction here. So with that comes a lot of new people um, in the community. And, you know, it's just fun to, to watch how it's growing and the different neighborhoods forming. And um, yeah, I, I love it. I, you know, when I'm gone, obviously I went back to Belize. I got to see some friends there. It's always a good time. Uh, but then I come back and I get into a little bit different group here. Um, so I'm anxious to have my weekend here, my first weekend back, just to kind of revisit with friends. I have some friends that are about to move into their new home here at Grand Pacifica. Um, so too. later today, Thanks. when I get off with you, I get to go do the walkthrough and see their new home. And they're so excited about it. They're friends of mine that have the dog Whiskey. I, you've probably heard me talk about Whiskey before because he's playmates with my dog. So good, I'm anxious good. to go you know, see them get the keys turned over to their home and it'll be exciting afternoon for sure. It is fantastic. And they are gorgeous homes. And Mike Cobb and I always talk about this folks. Remember Mike has a show every Friday at noon at offshore.club, uh, the offshore investment report. And he and I always talk about the fact, what we call the, the 10% factor. You can buy the home you buy at Grand Pacifica or Grand Bayman, Pretty much any resident and any home you buy throughout Central or South America costs you about 10 percent of what it would cost in the U.S. I mean, absolutely. There's just no doubt about that. Uh, it, so if you buy like I think some of them at, at uh, Viejo Village Viejo, is that what it's called? Oh, San guess. Diego Viejo. What is it? San Diego Viejo. It's San the Diego Viejo. I know they have some there for around 200000 a little bit more. Literally would cost easily, would cost $2 million at any, any comparable home in the U.S. Is that the, These are within walking distance of the beach and the golf course and the horseback riding and the restaurants, everything, right? I mean, yeah. you are lucky. Yeah, there. It, that's a great community. A lot of people love it because it's real central. I am. And that's actually, yeah, that's where I am right now is in San Diego Viejo. So uh, a lot of great communities, you know, that I am. Yeah, that's where I'm at right now. The uh, Ava tiny homes are coming along great. It's so exciting to see they're right there on Asachio Beach. Um, and then Bella, the beachfront villas, they're probably going to be one of my favorite communities. Um, their growth is happening really quickly. So um, I'll definitely have to get some new footage for you to share. But yeah, lots of things going on here at Grand Pacifica and, you know, just around the community as well. It, the, these cozy homes, I call them cozy homes. Tiny mm -hmm. homes sounds to me like I'm supposed to be a Lilliputian or something. Folks, <laughs> these are not tiny homes. These are very cozy. They're very ample. When you add in the terraces and all that, you're talking well over 1,200 square feet. That's not tiny. That's a wonderful home. And, and they are near the beach. And I think you can get them for as low as 149,000, right? Right. That's literally on the beach would cost, again, 10 times as much in the U.S. because these are very beautiful, beautiful homes. Everything, just everything for you right there. And uh, you get you get out the front door and walk to the beach. You can't beat that. So yeah. you that community has the river running behind it. Um, it's going to be beautiful. They'll have their own pool and some amenities there. So again, uh, it's one of those areas. Every morning when I, I try to do a walk or a run, and I actually go out to Osceola Beach. So it's like I said, it's fun to see the uh, progress every day. And I think they'll have their own little coffee shops and boutique restaurant type things eventually, right? Yes. They're looking at uh, what type of, you know, food and other amenities they're going to put out in that area because they do Fantastic. have an area there between us or Ava and Bella. So they'll definitely have their food options and things for that location. Fantastic. And then, so let's talk about Leslie at large, because I, I'm very, from the very beginning, we were both very excited about Leslie at large and it got overtaken by events, but now it's back. It is back folks. Cause there's Leslie. The, this is to me, it is kind of like one of my favorite shows on, they don't call it cable anymore. I don't know what they call it. All, it is diners, dives, and what is it called? Drive-ins. Drive 
<laughs> yes, I love that show. <laughs> of course they would. And you know, we're not going to be as far out as uh, as. And now I can't remember the guy's name. Uh, I'm having a Biden moment here. I can't remember the guy's name, but yeah. I can see him with the blonde hair and and yeah. even. But we're not going to be as far out as him. But you are going to take us different places with footage and interact with real people, right? I am absolutely. I that's one of the reasons I came to Nicaragua was to explore this country. And you know, I've had some great. Uh, Fun adventures. I did the volcano boarding, which I've got you know footage of that. But I really want to take another group back to capture some great memories. So uh, that'll be a fun thing to do in Lyon. Uh, I've gone to Granada multiple times. I really love it there. A lot of cool things to do. Recently, I got to go and do a little boat tour around uh, the little islands there. And you, there was one called Monkey Island. And if anybody knows me, I have like a monkey thing. I love monkeys. And I got to literally, re like I was face to face. This monkey was staring me in the face. It was all I had not to like hug it. I wanted to hug the monkey. I was like, oh my gosh, can I just stay on this island? So they were all cracking up at me. But yeah, that was a really fun thing to do. Um, I know, it's so, I'm crazy. It's so funny you say about monkeys. A lot of a lot of our viewers for Coffee with Care of Carter are 65 or older, right? 60 to 70. And so they remember when I was a kid, you're not going to remember this, but there were, the Today Show was had a guy named Dave Garraway. He was the host. I know this. Don't count me out, Carter. Are you serious? <laughs> with, yes, with I Dave watched Fred it with Muggs. my mom. What'd you say? Watched it with my mom. I love it. <laughs> a chimpanzee, J. Fred Muggs, that was... They'd have on, and little did all of us know, Dave Garraway hated that chimpanzee. <laughs> but, he, but they were both good actors because you would have thought they liked each other. So, so you do like monkeys, unbelievable. Anything. So when, I'll tell you a funny story about myself. So when I was a little girl, <laughs> I loved monkeys, and I always would ask for one. And my mother's like, "You can't, you can't have a pet monkey." And I would be like, "Well, why not? Ellie May has one on the Beverly Hills Billies." <laughs> And BJ, the, the show BJ and the Bear, I'm like, he has a monkey. So I would get really upset because I'm like, all these other people on TV have a pet monkey. And I wanted one for myself. So my dad, one Christmas, he adopted me a little stuffed animal monkey. And I named her Susie Q. And she wore a little pink dress. And I still have her to this day. So He's my one monkey love started. Really, yeah. Okay. Now, let me back up for a minute. I think earlier you said that you had been, did you say volcano surfing or did I hear it wrong? No, volcano boarding is what they call oh, it. Volcano boarding, the heck yeah. is volcano boarding? And you literally, uh, we did it in Lyon, it's a little bit outside. You go to Lyon, you start there, it's about an hour <laughs> from Grand Pacifica. You ride in this back of this truck up to the you know base of this volcano. It's an, I think it is an active volcano. Um, it's called Cerro Negro. And you get out and you hike up to the top. Now, they don't I, they don't tell you this in the brochure, or at least not the brochure I read. So I didn't realize about the hike up. It was fine. I mean, I was able to do it. But I was I think in my mind, I thought, oh, they'll drop us off at the top. We'll come down. That's it. But no, you hike to the top of this volcano. Amazing views. You've got all these different craters. Um, you're a little hot and sweaty when you get to the top. You know, you, you're ready for a break. And then they give you these bright yellow, terrible looking jumpsuits to put on over your clothes. And you have this yellow board, like wooden board, and you get this jumpsuit on, you have to cover every inch of you. So you've got like a, something over your mouth, you've got these big, you know, clear goggles on, you look ridiculous. And then they take and they pointed, they're like, you're going to go off right there. And I really thought they were joking with us because it looked really steep to me. And I thought, that's not where we're going down. I thought we were going to round the corner and it would be somewhere else. But he's like, no, that's, that's where you go. <laughs> and they tell you two techniques. Okay. It's very important. They give you instructions on there's a technique to use to go really fast and a technique you use to slow yourself down. Well, I'm, you know, I just turned 50 last year. I consider myself adventurous. I love yes. to try new things, but I do know my limitations sometimes. I said, I think I probably should try the slower route this time and not try to win any, you know, uh, races down to the bottom. So you sit on this little board and 
from the minute, like you could tell this thing was ready to go, <laughs> you know, they're kind of holding you and one person goes at a time. And when I started going, I felt so wobbly. I didn't feel, I felt so out of control, which I have control issues. I was like, oh, I don't like this feeling. <laughs> and so the guy, before I got too far, he kind of stopped my board and he's like, no, one of your foot's going weird. You've got to do your feet a certain way. So I came up with my own technique. I found for myself, if I dug my elbows into my knees, then it kept my feet more straight. And then I just cruised right on down to the bottom of this volcano and I, I would do it again. It was a pretty cool experience. I think everyone should give it a try once. And when you do it again, you will have footage for us, right? Oh, absolutely. I've got, I can get some footage from the last time, but oh, I want to take the residents because most of the residents here have not gone yet. So I think, and, and they want to, they want to experience things. So I want to get a group of some of the residents together and take them soon. And we'll definitely capture the moment. That's fantastic. And you mentioned Granada. That Granada, for folks, folks, Granada is a colonial city, right? Yeah, Spanish colonial. The architecture is amazing. Beautiful. The yellow cathedral there is, you know, one of those that people recognize from photos. And, you know, you stay there in that Central Park area and just walk around. And there's a street called the, uh, I think it's the La Casada. And it's like little restaurants and shops. And at nighttime, it's lovely because they have it all lit up. And it, it's just a great vibe. I love the atmosphere there. It's fantastic. And you will take us on a, a restaurant tour in Managua? Oh, we could for sure. Yeah, Managua's kind of a, Managua's a neat place. You know, it's obviously the city, um, different than most cities that I've been to. Uh, but you've got the, you know, the Galleria Mall there. Of course, any women, women that likes to shop, we like to go to the Galleria yes. um, and check things out there. They've got the movie theater and all the restaurants. Um, it's a great, you know, location. But there's um, some other places I've been to a few. I have some friends that live in Managua. So they're starting to, you know, take me and show me around the different things there. So that will be a stop for sure. Now, another place that I would love for Leslie at large to go and take some people is San Juan del Sur. I've not been there yet. Ooh, and I think yeah. great things about it. Yeah. Um, so that's really high on the list as well as the corn islands. Oh yeah. Now that San Juan del Sur has great surfing, right? <clears throat> yes. Famous for surfing. It's beaches. And then mm -hmm. the, excuse me, the yes. corn islands are two big corn island and little corn island. Right. <clears throat> right. And they're on the Caribbean side. So I've been told, you know, I lived in Ambergris Key Belize for a while, which is in the Caribbean. Um, so I've been told that the Corn Islands are very similar to Ambergris Key. So I'm curious to oh, go nice. check myself and see. Yeah. So they're very, I think, especially Little Corn Island, I think is still very pristine, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Yeah. From what I hear, it's definitely more remote, you know, no Wi-Fi, you know, you're going to be more isolated there is from what I hear. Good. I think, I, and we want to see in the restaurant tour, we want to see some of the little hole-in-the-wall Managua restaurants too. When I was in Honduras, then I went in La Ceiba, there was a restaurant called, I think it was something like Jose's Tortillas and Savings Bank. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so, so we, want, we want you to find something like that in Managua. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I'll have to work on that and find out some, find some really cool places for it. But you mentioned Honduras, and guess what? That is one place I have always wanted to go. I was supposed to stop in Roatan on a cruise one time, but I was not able to. They had to, you know, reroute us for some reason. And of course, um, we've got uh, some cozy homes going on there uh, near That's right. So the I'm. Reef. Yeah, so I'm hoping in the next month or so, um, I had to go get a new passport. Did I tell you about that whole crazy thing? No. So I've been traveling so much that I literally, when I came back in this last time, I had done a little quick trip to Costa Rica. And when I came back in in March, I literally had half a page left in my passport. I was like, uh-oh, like this is a problem because I knew I needed to go to Belize here recently. So I went to the U.S. Embassy here in Managua. That was the first, but it was very easy process. They were quite helpful. And uh, I got the extended version to my passport this time. So now I'm back in motion. So hopefully in the next month, and I'm going to go check out uh, Honduras. So you'll Good. have to- Now the, the yeah. reef, the new cozy home development, Mike Cobb community in Honduras, the reef is only, I think like 10 miles 
from my home at La Ceva Beach Club on the beach so you can stay there. Oh, well, perfect. <laughs> I would love that. That would be awesome. And tell me, I hear a little bit about La Ceva, but I hear there is there's golf course and restaurants and all kinds of things there as well. There are all kinds of restaurants. I, I don't think there's a golf course in La Ceiba. There's okay. a beach, obviously, because it's right on the water. But restaurants, they have a shopping mall. It's a city of about, I think, 200,000. Okay. So everything you want there, but still very quaint. It's still very quaint. All the buildings are the different Caribbean colors. And uh, uh, just it's, I, I think it's a gorgeous city. And, and I love being there. And I, my home that I had originally was about, uh, I guess, about a half an hour outside <clears throat> Los Aba. My new home is only about 10 or 15 minutes. So you can go back and forth. And I'm going to buy a car and leave it there for all my guests to go down. So there you go. You're set. Well, I love it. And you know, guess what I hear is near the property in Honduras. Yes. There are monkeys, apparently. <laughs> there are apparently behind the plantation. There's like plantations and things behind and you've got some jungle areas. So when they said there were monkeys there, I was like, sign me up. Like I'm ready to go. <laughs> I, I have to be. I have to be honest with you. I, I lived there for quite some time. I never saw a monkey. I did see these. See these. My wife got me this. Oh I did yeah. see these. Oh, right. Cause. I love yeah, those. I, too. I can never get my hand right on there. There we go. There we go. Yeah. I don't want it to fly away. But <laughs> uh, you will see those. So, and so you can report back to us from there with less at large as well. So we got that to look forward to, and I think we're going to start. It's going to be on every Wednesday at noon. I think we're going to start next Wednesday, right? Yeah, that sounds great to me. That's fantastic. Well, thank you. It is wonderful to have you back again. It's always delightful when we talk <laughs> about everything right across the board. So thank you, Leslie. You're this is great. Well. I'm and we're looking forward to it. it. You and I will talk occasionally on Leslie at large, too. Very good. Yes. All right. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Have a great one. <laughs> oh, she is just wonderful. She is just monkeys and <laughs> monkeys and dogs. And, and she's going to take us everywhere, folks. With that personality, you know you're going to have fun. Yeah, absolutely tremendous amount of fun. So there you go. Leslie at large is coming back uh, from Nicaragua, from Nicaragua. So you're going to have the best of both worlds, Leslie and Nicaragua. Okay. And now let's go to another part of that world. Let's go right to another part of that world. How's that for a segue? We are going to go now to El Salvador, just as I promised you at the outset of today's show. <clears throat> and I know, as I said earlier, some of you are going, El Salvador, you know, <laughs> like, this, like the vampire sign. Folks, trust me, it is, uh, El Salvador is safe. I'm just going to say it flat out. You know, I would never send you anywhere that was not safe. El Salvador is safe. Look, but don't just take my word for it. Look, here's an article that just appeared in Reuters, okay? Can you read that headline? Okay, that's Reuters. And what it says in the lead there, crime in El Salvador is down 50%. 50%. So it's safe there. And it's gorgeous. And it's beautiful. And specifically, today, we're going to San Salvador, the capital. And I want to show you how safe that is. I'll tell you what we're going to do. Let me be clear. It is, let me put this in perspective. If you have a choice of moving to San Salvador, as you're about to see, or Chicago, or Baltimore, oh my God, or Washington, D.C., or Detroit, or Cleveland, or New York, or Philadelphia, Philadelphia, where I think they just had their three or 400th carjacking, set a new record for homicides last year. Uh, Seattle, Portland, Milwaukee, for God's sake, even York, Pennsylvania, where I am right now. If you have a choice between going to those places to feel safe and secure or San Salvador, get your passport and head to San Salvador. In fact, right now, I'm going to show you just to show you how safe it is. Okay. Because look, I have to cover this because I know it's a concern of yours. Okay. There's no doubt. It's gorgeous. It's a beautiful city, modernized. Oh my God. Uh, but let me show you a, a video, okay? I'm going to show you a short. It's only a, it, it, it's like a, the video itself, I think it's like 14 or 15 minutes. We're pulling two minutes for you. 
here you go. This is the video I'm about to show you. Okay. Okay. So can you see that? That little, that's the Patton family. Uh, Kyle, the husband, is not there. They travel the world. Do you see what it's called? The, the um, traveling. Hold on. Let me read it to you. It's the, um, they travel the world. It's uh, growing up without borders. They take their three daughters, Kyle and his wife there. And you notice what it says there, this whole video, notice the theme, San Salvador is safe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> She's there with her three daughters. Let Gary, let's show them this two minute grab of this Patton family video. Wonderful family. Check out their, their website when you get a chance growing up without borders. Wonderful family. Uh, Gary, let's, let's show them an ex show them this excerpt from their video. Folks, if you're like me, if you, as I said earlier, if you're a city guy, I was raised in old Baltimore. It was like a dream come true when I was a kid. It ain't now, but it was then. El Salvador still is, as you're going to see right now in this video excerpt. So something really popular here is something called pulpulsa. There are these things here and inside there's cheese and flowers or different flavors. Sometimes they put beans inside and uh, basically you get four for one dollar. So we're going to try it now for the first time. There you go. There you go. So that's, that's <coughs> San, San Salvador. The long view, okay. So let's let's take a closer view and do our thousand dollar listing Caribbean in El Salvador, okay? In El Salvador, because I have a home for you. Do I have a home for you? Do I have a home for you? Again, it's from Vivion, folks. I always tell you this: go to Vivion to check homes out, okay? I mean, if you get to buy a home in Grand Pacifica, like I talked with Leslie about, God bless you, that's fantastic. Or Grand Bayman, any other Mike Cobb community, all the amenities, everything. Sometimes you want a one-off, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Okay, see the number there? Can you see the number up there? All you have to do is go to vivion.com, and then you put that number in that little box up there. See the little box right there, little white box? Click, go, and it's going to take you right to... The, the home we're going to talk about today. Okay. I like this home. I like this home. Now, let me make clear. This is not a fancy home. This is not a fancy home. I show you some places that are absolutely stunningly gorgeous, still cost next to nothing, but they're stunningly gorgeous. This is not a stunningly gorgeous. This is a home. This is a home in San Salvador. What I, here it is. Here it is right here. Okay. These pictures are not the greatest, but that's the home. Okay. Nice little home. It is, you know, three bedrooms. All right. Um, single one story house. Uh, three bedroom, three full baths, private quarters for the, for the maid. When you live in El Salvador, San Salvador, you can afford a maid. Trust me. If you bring in 2000 a, a month, not a year, a month, you can afford a maid and have plenty of money left over for everything else you want. So that's the home. Nothing fancy, but what I like about it is you're in the city like we just saw with the patents. I love a city. There's everything to do, especially a city like that where you can go places and do things. When I was a kid who grew up in old Baltimore, I'd take the number 10 bus everywhere and do everything. You can still do it in San Salvador, okay? So the home is just your home base. It's your home base because you got so much to do, okay? And this is a nice home. This is a nice home. Here's the backyard view. There's the backyard view for you. Nice backyard. Look at there. Plenty of grass for you to cut if that's what you like to do. Here's the inside, the living room. All right. As I say, this is nothing fancy, but you'll make it fancy. You'll make it fancy. Picture your own, picture yourself there with your own furniture, your own ambiance. You're going to bring your own feel, your own touch to it. Here's the, the kitchen. 
kitchen, everything you want right there. Okay. Okay. There's everything you want in the kitchen right there. It's nothing elaborate, but it's everything you want. Okay. So that that's, that's the home. And the nice part is we're talking about a three bedroom home, three bath home in San Salvador. You go out the door, you walk to the stores you love. You walk to, through the neighborhoods you love it. Again, you saw the patents, you can go everywhere. I love the way they have all the kiosks everywhere. When I lived in La Ceiba, we had those, and I loved it. Buy fresh fruit, buy fresh meat, whatever I want, it's right there. That's what you got there, okay? That's the joy of living right there in the city, okay? What's the price? What's the price? Okay, Frank, Frank Valdez is offering, and you'll see his name and how to contact him when you go to Vivium. Frank Valdez is saying 110,000 negotiable. Folks, that home in a city, in a beautiful city, okay, that's safe and nice, it's kind of hard to compare. Well, let's say this, that home, we know the average cost of a home in Seattle, where I wouldn't live if you gave me a house, it's so unsafe now. And, and, and if you work for, by the way, if you work for the government in, in, in Seattle now, you are provided a police escort from your office to your car. It's the only way you can make it. If you don't work for the government, you're on your own. Good luck. Not not that way. No, so, so, so. The average cost of a home there, $765,000. That's what's known as crazy. This one, 110000 Remember my 10 times factor? A home like this in, in a city, if there were one left in America, as nice as San Salvador, probably cost you, I'd say five times as much. Let's not say 10, let's say five. Okay, let's say five. All right, it's big, it's spacious, you have your garage, everything you want right there for you. 110,000, offer them 90, offer them 90, get nothing to lose. Or you can go ahead and buy a home in Philadelphia. Oh, here's one, here's one in Philly, another city. There you go, there you go. Look, it's only 100, 139. It has, what does it say there, six bedrooms, six bedrooms. I think four of them are there, as you see, don't have any windows, unfortunately. What the heck? Or you can buy this one with no windows in the whole house for only 155. So there's your choice. <laughs> buy this beautiful home <laughs> in beautiful San Salvador where you just saw the patents, totally enjoying their life there. Okay, gorgeous little home. They're little, three bedrooms. For 110, offer 90, offer 90, always offer less. You can always go up, you can't come down, or you can uh, live here. <laughs> Stop it. All right, so there we go. There's your thousand dollar listing. Caribbean, if you're now, this is not for everyone. If you're like me, I'm a city guy, okay? I'm a city guy. I like the city life ambiance, which you can't find in the US anymore because they destroyed all the cities, okay? You still can in Central and South America. And there you have picture perf proof, picture perfect proof there in San Salvador. You've seen the video, you've seen the home. Check it out. Go to video and check it out. You saw the number there. Let me show you the number again in case I held it up too fast. Write it down, write it down. Just check it out, folks. Just check it out. Okay. You know, the uh, it, it, be bold. That's what I always say. As a matter of fact, being bold is what our, and we'll, we always close with motivational moments, so let's do that. In this today's motivational moment, instead of showing you a video like I like to do sometimes, I'm, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you a book that will help you be bold, okay? There it is, right there. Look at that. Okay? I got it for you. I got it for you. The Birth of a Brand. This is, this is by Brian Smith, the guy who created Ugg shoes. I don't own any Ugg, sho Ugg shoes. I, they're very nice. I just, just not my style. You know, I, I like, you know, when I'm relaxing, I like sandals, which I wear all the time when I'm in Honduras. One of my two homes in Honduras, one of which is on the beach, as Leslie and I just discussed, or I wear my jogging shoes because I like to jog. But Uggs are very popular, I know, especially you know, like a lot of you probably own them. This book, though, don't think it's just, what, Carter, I don't want to read a book about how to sell shoes. It's not about how to sell shoes. It's about having the entrepreneurial spirit, which is inside you, okay? The spirit of persistence and perseverance. The spirit 
of, as I always say, dreaming big and living large. That's what this book is about. Honest to God, every page inspires you. The ups, the downs, the seeing it through and the coming out on top. And this book will help you make your move to Central or South America, maybe to the home in El Salvador, wherever you choose, maybe to Grand Pacifica, maybe to the Saba Beach Club where I have my home, which I bought for $30,000 on the beach, gated, guarded, garden, the community. The front yard is the beach, is the sand, the beach, a sandy beach, backyard swimming pool, folks. Easily would cost 500000 in the U.S. if you could get it, probably more. This book will help you make your move, okay? Dream big, live large, find the good life at a great price in Central or South America. It's yours free. Here's the first person who writes to me at Carib Carter 7. It's a number seven, okay? Carib Carter 7 at gmail.com. There you go, right there. Gary's got it up there. First person who writes to me, I'm going to send it to you. I've already got the envelope. Okay, going to put your name right there and you're going to have this thing by the end of the week. Okay, you send me, you, you, say, say, give me the book. Give me the book. I need inspiration. I need to make my move. It's time for me to put my plan B escape route into place. Make my move to Central or South America. Okay, this book will help you do it because it's important for you to do it. It's never been more important to escape from the U.S. and arrive in the sun, sand, and surf, okay? The Caribbean paradise of your choice, wherever you choose to be, okay? So as I tell you, at the end of every coffee with Carib Carter, grab your cup, let's take our sip. Let's do this thing. <laughs>